Hey everyone, and praise the Lord. This is a beautiful day. Today we reflect uh, on the story of David and it starts from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 going onwards to the end of that book. Last time we were talking about Saul and the way Saul used his mind, his position. He felt he had been anointed by God and now he was already operating in his own element. Now we want to see the contrast. David is introduced in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 and the Bible says uh, in that story, I think it is from verse um, in chapter 16 from verse 13, Samuel goes to their house to anoint him and then he's introduced in around verse 16 there. And when he's introduced, this is a boy who has been gotten there, a small boy, but he says he was uh, ruddy, handsome. No, another version says actually he was dark and handsome. So a beautiful thing. So guys who look for her, David was a dark guy. A story for another day. But David is introduced and God anoints him to become king of Israel while he's still a boy. But it's going to take many other years before David becomes king. But let's see how David handles himself. The first thing when we see David after this anointing is when he goes to the battlefield where his brothers are. When David comes there and he finds Goliath calling names to the children of Israel and abusing them, he decides to confront him. And when he confronts him, he confronts Goliath in the name of the Lord. He relies on his relationship with God. And when he's asked, he begins to give a story. He tells the king why he's going to take on this guy. He says, I was there in the field and a lion came and when a lion comes or a bear comes, I go get the lamb out of, his, uh, out of its paws. And if the lion attacks me, I get it by his hairs I, and I kill it. And I do this in the name of the Lord. God has always delivered me. And he tells Goliath, you know, the God who delivered me in those circumstances is going to deliver you into my hands. He has confidence in his relationship with God, not only himself. Yes, he was beautiful. Well, actually not beautiful. He was handsome. He was good looking. And he had been anointed. But he's not depending on those things. He is depending on God. Let me tell you something. Because sometimes we make this mistake. You realize that God has given you favor, opportunity, and so on. But you keep God aside and you begin to operate by yourself. Now, God wants us to continually depend on him. He wants us to focus on him. In fact, that is why in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. God knows he has put the capabilities in you, but he wants you to still trust him with all your heart. And not only lean on your own understanding, to acknowledge him. And that's what David does. And when David is confronted by other, other chances, other things, Saul becomes jealous because David has won and so on, and he's trying to kill him. Every time David had an opportunity to revenge or to kill, he remembers that Saul was the anointed of God. And because he knows the relation, his relationship with God, he will not violate himself by killing this man. Why? Because he realizes that this man is anointed by God and God is able to handle that issue. I want you to look at the situation that you have and it doesn't matter how difficult it is, depend on God. It may be at work, maybe at the business place, it may be in the other place, and you are confronted with a situation that you can resolve. You have opportunities to do it by your own. Don't do it. Don't do it by your own strength. Lean on God. Ask God. Let God take care of those issues. Let him take care of that boss who is unpleasant. God is going to do it. And when he does it, no blame will come to you. People will not think of you as a guy who allergy imposed. God will, people will know you as a man who depended on God through and through. Do not touch the anointed of God. And sometimes even if they are not pleasant, by the way, and I'm speaking to people in church, sometimes your pastor is not very pleasant, sometimes somebody, a deacon or an elder, even at home, your father is not a pleasant. Do not touch the anointed. God has placed them there for a reason. Let them do their thing. Let God deal with them. You play your part. Be faithful, honor God, fear him. Be obedient and do not rebel. And if you do that, you will prosper in the things that you do. We'll continue with this 
study and discussion and engagement at another time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your people, even as they consider this word. Give them a pleasant time, even, Lord, as they lean on you completely and depend on you. Bless them, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you.